Good morning, everyone. Just uh, Russia White, a morning care for last day. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful week. Caroline Shorunke, Bosefaya Jola, Daniela Tsenga, Justin Mayo. Adi Shoronke, Pearl David, Oluwatoyin Bidemi, Obi Ojimadu, Shout Speed, Mayowa, Adiola Disu, Emmy Bobby, she gone one for Anastasia McDonald, Shola Olada, Ola Pade, Adia Guadeni, Princess Juliet, Joy Akanomo. Uh, Mashu Esong, Henry Oko, Oluwa Fumina Yodina, Albentine. Well, I would like to encourage you people to go ahead and share the link to this message. Let's go share the link. And uh, as you do that, uh, we will begin to... Please go share the link. Once you have shared the link, let's begin this week's teaching. It's a new week, a new day, and we're going to be talking on a new topic. And the topic is raising up godly children. Raising up godly children. So if you have shared the link, uh, my, I will start today by giving you what I call the, uh, the laws, the laws of raising up godly children, the laws of raising up godly children. So if you are ready and you have shared the link, then here we are, let's go. So we are going stage, stage by stage, right? We have dealt with understanding men and their psychology. We have dealt with the difference between men and women. We have dealt with uh, getting married for men and the women. We have dealt with the psychology of the woman, the man. Uh, we have dealt with fatherhood and the consequences of going on without fathers. We have, we, have, we have gone a long way. And now we have dealt with what the men would like to know about women, what the women would like to know about men. We are doing well. We are doing well. <laughs> I think almost two months talking about the topic of uh, family. And now we are getting to the children. Uh, maybe this, will, this might be the week. Maybe after this week I might end this topic and next week might be another one because then it's New Year so I might start with another topic that will help us get ready for the new year. But uh, before then, I think I will end, this week will be the final culmination of uh, uh, the series I've been doing on family. But we have, really, we have really gone a long way with this series on family. We've really gone a long way. So the topic of today, like I said, is uh, the uh, loss of raising up a godly, ch a godly child or loss of raising up godly children. Number one, number one thing you want to know about raising up uh, godly children is that upbringing, children upbringing is not, it's not a spontaneous thing. It's not a spontaneous thing. Most, people, most parents don't know that when it comes to raising up godly children, they have to be intentional and they have to be purposeful. They have to be purposeful, intentional, and systematic. 
Uh, but most most parents they don't do that. What most parents do to raise up their children, no, what, what we call uh, upbringing or raising up children is what I call chaotic. Um, yeah, just chaotic screams and shouts of orders and rules and regulations. So these are just you know. Uh, emotional outburst rather than uh, upbringing you know to really raise up a child or to really raise up children uh, you need to be purposeful about it let me tell you now let me let me tell you what that means like, like how do you I think you understand this what most parents do raising up their children is mainly to you know, be shouting to the child, oh, don't do that. Do what I tell. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? You know, I told you not to do that. No, beat them, you know, smack them. Now, why are you doing that? Go there. Don't go there. Go there. Now, stop. Sit down there. Come and greet your father. Go and greet your brother. Go and greet uncle. Say hello. Good morning. Uh, this. And when the person does, when the child does something wrong, they beat them and shout, what are you doing? Come and help mama. Bring this thing. Bring that. Just chaotic, uh, unorganized, unorderly, emotional, instinctive, and uh, ordering and giving out of audition out of orders, but no, no real intentional, systematic uh, approach to raising of children. By the way, if you look at the comments that are coming in, you see two comments from me. Uh, two, two from my page. Uh, one is talking about HMT. For those of you who still want to come to HMT as fast as possible, you might be able to come to one in uh, in January, January second uh, to sixth. And then for uh, those of you who want to spread the invitation to for people to come here and watch this program. Uh, they, that's the other link there. So anyway, so that that uh, model of raising of children that we have is counter, is counterproductive. That is not raising of children. That is not intentional uh, way of raising of a child. You don't raise up children just by you know occasionally giving out instructions or um shouting to other uh, or even talking nicely to them uh one you know you know what to do or what not to do you don't raise up children just by giving out instruction to them when they are wrong or when they are right or when they are supposed to be corrected or when they are supposed to be told what to be what to be done that is not the the ideal way to raise up children so if you want to raise up godly children that will be that their lives will be predictable you also have to be Predictable. You have to be intentional in in your in your actions. You have to be purposeful in what you are in in in, in that in that process. So instead of doing all the shouting and screaming at a child, instead of doing uh, that reactional uh, upbringing of a child, instead of uh, you know, just doing the emotional thing, I think the best way to try to raise up uh, children is to be purposeful about it. The way I have done it in our family is this: Before, between the ages of zero to three, uh, I, I, I think the woman plays a more important role uh, because she, the baby is very small before the age of three. You know, either she's being bred, uh, bred fed, I mean, uh, she's being uh, breastfed, or is being, um, you know. You know, under the care of the mother, but even at that, a father must play a role from the very first day of uh, of the birth of the child. Um, when your husband, or your wife, you know, first of all, let's start from the very moment of of birth. You know, I, I wanted to give you the the laws, right? I wanted to start with the loss, but right now let's leave the loss apart. Let's. I'm going to 
come to the loss maybe in the evening because I think I must give you general instructions first. So the general instruction, the, let me just give you these general principles. The, gen, the, the, the you know, we'll come to the loss, okay? Uh, because, you know, I, I will deal with the topic thoroughly. It's going to be all week, so don't worry about that. We'll deal with that. But I think I should give you the funda fundamentals. And the fundamental of that, of, uh, you know, raising up a child, it has to start with even the pregnancy, with when the baby was in the pregnant, I mean, in the stomach, I mean, in the, yeah, uh, in the, so much of the of the of the mother. So, what is the role of a father? Because we know what the role of a mother is. The role of a mother is that she gets pregnant, and she has the baby inside. So, what should a father do, or what should a uh, the parents do to make sure that uh, they take the best care of that child, of that baby? Number one, when you discover that your wife is pregnant the first thing to do is to rejoice with her because sometimes children suffer rejection and that rejection at times could have started from uh from when the baby is in the womb so for your child not to suffer that sort of rejection when the baby is still in the womb uh you need to respond and pass a message to that baby why the baby it just appeared in the body of your of your of your of your wife so uh when a man hears about the report of the of pregnancy of his wife the best reaction that will be healthy for the baby is that of joy so the father and the mother must rejoice at the appearance of that child and the father especially must congratulate the mother, must give her the word of support. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you what that means. I think I need help. Pastor Natasha, I will need you to help me here. I'm going to play a role here. So let's say this is your wife here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you have to leave me behind like that, yeah, so that you'll be able to appear. Yeah. So let's say this your wife here, yeah? this the husband, this the wife. So your wife gets pregnant. You must uh, tell her and express gratitude to her and tell her warmly. You must give her warmth and tell her that you are very happy at the pregnancy, that that you know that she became pregnant. You must express your excitement, you must express your protection to her, you must give the woman assurance and tell her that this pregnant it is your heart desire this pregnancy it is you know what you are waiting for it is a joy it is a joyful thing both for her and for you and for the child you must put your hand on the stomach of the woman pray for that child and release the blessing of a father upon that child and you must pray for her also for your wife also for her and to give her assurance that you know God is going to protect her, that you are asking God to protect her, you are asking God's blessing upon her. The woman is better under the protection of the husband's prayer. The husband's prayer is acting for her as a covering. That husband's prayer is acting as a protection over her and is also giving her assurance that my husband has accepted this child. My, as my husband has accepted me. My husband has accepted the baby in my stomach. So she is comforted. And apart from that, you need to hug her. You need to embrace her. You need to show to her that, you know, you are for her. That you are with her. That we are in this together. It's not just her, she who is pregnant. We are pregnant together. It's not your pregnancy. It's our pregnancy. It's not how is your pregnancy. It is how is our pregnancy. It's not you, you are, my wife is pregnant. No, it's we are pregnant. It's not that my wife is expecting a child. No, we are expecting a child. It is we. So you associate yourself with her. You, you know, you know, as a husband, let her always find, you know, always find out from her. Five times a day. When she's pregnant, five to ten times a day. You must find out, how are you doing? Princess, no, why? You worry about you call her honey, princess. How are you doing? How is the baby? Let me touch her. That touching, the process of touching has to go in 
all the time. That is the very first time you realize that your husband, no, your wife is pregnant. You must start by this kind of attitude. That is one. Number two, uh, after you know you discover that the, the, uh, she she is about maybe one month or two months or three months pregnancy, not later than three months. In the first three months, you must make sure that she does not carry. Mm, the first three months is very crucial. The first two weeks. And the first three months, she must make sure that she doesn't do every work. And make sure, as the husband, you have to make sure that she does not do heavy work. You have to make sure that she's not carrying every, 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 any heavy load. And she's not bending down to carry load or to have anything, you know, pre that, to, the, that demands pressure from her. So you protect her and, you know, guard her and make sure you carry things for her. You know, you help her do some of the things that she needs to do. Then by three months pregnant, when she's three months you know, pregnant, you must make sure that you register uh, with a doctor or for maternity uh, oversight. So uh, maybe, you know, make sure that you go to the hospital and register with uh, the hospital or the doctor that is going to be responsible for the delivery. Uh, so, you know, that all that attitude, all that attitude to the, to the pregnancy, the attitude to your wife, it shows uh, acceptance. It shows that you have accepted her. It shows that you have covered her. It shows that, uh, you know, that baby in the stomach is feeling that acceptance. That baby in the stomach is feeling that love. So you are transferring the spirit of love to that child that is inside that baby. You are transferring, you are laying the foundation of acceptance. You are laying the foundation of warmth. You are laying the foundation of fatherhood. You are laying the foundation of covering. You are laying the foundation of being a pillar. You are laying the foundation of being the found, you know, found, foundation you know, for, that, for that child. You are giving that woman peace. Because if she, if you, let's say you have, as, you have not accepted your wife. Or you just say, oh, you got pregnant. Oh, ah, we don't have money. This is your pregnancy. Ah, oh, wow. Ah. You know, and you, don't, you did not give her that comfort. She will begin to be nervous. You know, every little thing makes a woman to be nervous. Every little thing makes a woman to be concerned. Every, you know, little thing makes a woman to be afraid and, you know, nervous and angry and things like that. So, and no, you know, irritated. So instead of you, you know, so if you just leave her like that, that irritation that she's having and that nervousness that she's having, that, um, you know, that unsettlement that she's having is being transferred to the baby inside her. If she's experiencing fear uh, all the time, that fear is being transferred to the baby. If she's experiencing, you know, um, irritation, lack of peace, lack of protection, uh, lack of security, lack of protection, that, you know, she, all her feelings are being transferred to that child. So that is why you as the husband, you must put her under social protection or that under social security such that she's not, you know, stressed up at all and no negative thing is being transferred to that child. And that's why I always tell men, I mean, I always tell women that don't try to, don't ever marry a poor man, you know, if you have a choice, of course, but most, most, you know, especially if you are living in, in modern world here in Europe or something like that, don't marry a poor man. Don't, especially, but even if you marry a poor man, no matter how poor he is, make sure that you don't go to be pregnant unless the conditions are right. So before you get pregnant, make sure that you have a car. You must have a car before you get pregnant because I can't imagine my wife being pregnant and she's now, you know, carrying that stomach and she had to be struggling for transportation at the bus stop or the metro underground or, you know, you know or in the bus or, or that, you know, anything could happen. When, when a woman pregnant, I, I, I think that if any man really loves his wife, if you know she's pregnant, even if she's one day pregnant, even if she is not visible, I think if you are a caring man, it is only natural for you to make sure that she doesn't go in public transport. 
It is only natural for you to make sure that she has extra protection. It is only natural for you to guide her, to safeguard her, to you know, watch over her, to protect her, to put your arms around her, and to make sure, to tell her that, you know, princess, you are not going, you know, that transport anymore. You, are, you know, can you imagine she could fall down? She could be pushed. Anybody could, you know, so she has to, the minimum thing you could do is to give her a car, is to make sure that she has a car. Uh, and to, you, somebody is there to... to to, uh, to, 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 you know, to either, if you don't have a driver, at least you have the, have the car. But I can't imagine her going to public transport with stomach. What about if the stomach becomes six months, five months, and she's been, she, had, she has to, be, you know, you say, oh, other women are doing it. Let other women do it, but not my wife. That is what I, that is what I would say. Let any other woman, you know, do anything they want, they want treat their wives anyhow they want. But if you say you love that woman, if you say if that woman is, you know, you 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 are concerned for her, for her well-being, for for you know, for you you have feelings for her, you know, give her the insulation, give her the protection, give her as much care as you can. So that is one thing. Next thing you have, you have to do after three from three months, you must make sure that she has a medical uh, oversight from three months. She has to have medical oversight. So you are, she's going to see a doctor every month. And not just herself. Don't just send that there. Go and see the doctor. I've, I've arranged it. No, 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 no. You must make sure that you go with her every time to see the doctor. Make sure that you take her by your hand. You put her in the car. And you say, let's go and see a doctor. She might say, oh, I'm feeling why, fine. Everything is okay. No, no problem. We go, no, no. Let's go. Let the doctors tell us if everything is okay, if everything is not okay. That's one thing. That's another thing that you have to do. So every month between, between the age of, uh, before, between three months pregnancy to the time she delivers, she must be under the oversight of, uh, of, a, of a nurse or a, a maternity worker or, or of a doctor. Somebody who will be there eventually to, to, to deliver the baby. All right. So that's one thing. Then the next thing you have to do to already, all this thing is not just about your wife. All this thing is about the baby that is coming. You are transferring your love to that child that is still in your, in your, in your wife's womb. So the next thing you have to do is to already, to take your wife. And by the time she is just, uh, maybe from that eight, three months pregnancy, you begin to go take her and begin to do shopping together because she needs to begin to wear i mean to wear another size of dress she needs to begin to look for you know new uh, dresses new clothes for her to buy so you have to be going with her to order you know, to buy new clothes together apart from buying new clothes you have to also go with to her to the shop to do shopping for uh, for all the things for the children you have to buy uh, the cot, or what do you call it? Is it the cot? The, the bicycle, the little bicycle where you put the baby. Uh, you have to uh, buy the clothes that you are expecting. If you know the, you know, there are some co clothes, children clothes that are universal. When, when they are born, for the first three months, you can still wear universal something for them. So begin to buy, you know, some things for, for, uh, for the baby. When, uh, when you might need to also... Uh, prepare your home, put everything in the house in order, maybe prepare a, a different room or a separate room that is going to be like a baby's room, uh, you, know, you know, so, you know, then when the, you are pregnant, when you are like six months pregnant, when you are like six months pregnant, and the next thing you have to do is you have to go um, and, uh, you have to go for a, what this is what I would recommend at least. Maybe it's not available where you are, but if you're a real man and you really care for your, for your wife and you really care for your children, I would like to recommend you to go for a separate class. In any country, there should be classes. If they are not in your country, you have to start it. Uh, they, you, know, you, you have to go to a class where you know, they do consultation for husband and wife on how to give birth without stress, 
or how to give birth. No, with it's not possible to give birth without stress, of course, with little stress, with much support. So it's a class on how husbands can help their wives during labor. So it's a class on how husband can help. You know, so from six months, you have to begin. You know, there are different consultations and there are different classes. So you have to be going to you know to the consultation. How you as the as the prenatal classes? Yes, it's prenatal classes. So these prenatal classes don't just allow the woman herself to go. You know, you have to go there with the with the with her to support her. Do, you know, don't say uh, other women are not going with their wives. I have to go to work. No, make time for your wife. Make time to, that you make her to your priority. Make that, sure that she's your priority. Your 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 wife. Uh, your yeah. Your child is your priority. Your wife your, is your priority. Go with that to those prenatal uh, classes and uh, you know take all the considerations seriously and make sure that you are showing your wife that you are showing leadership. It is in a time like this, for that nine months of pregnancy, that a man must show leadership. You must demonstrate leadership to the to your wife. I mean, to your wife, show her that even if you were slow before, or even if you are, uh, even if you are lethargic before, or you are kind of holding back before, but now that you know you are committed, that this is your priority, this is your family, and that uh, you know. There is nothing like it for you. So you you want to commit, you know, your time and everything there. Uh, and uh, of, and then, you know, when she, the pregnancy becomes, uh, when the pregnancy becomes big and she's now like, let's say seven months pregnant or eight months pregnant or nine months pregnant, it becomes difficult for your wife to begin to wear her shoes by herself. You know, can you imagine somebody is pregnant like that? To be bending down to wear her shoes is tough for her. So, you know, for if you're a really caring husband, one thing that you have to try to do is to be all, to make it a principle that you will be wearing her shoes for her. So, especially when she needs to go out and she needs to wear shoes, so you need to wear a shoe for her. If you're a real, if you're a real husband, if you're a real caring husband if you if you you know so i know that a lot of people will say well why should i do that you know uh, i'm a man why should i be wearing shoes for my own for my wife if she's pregnant she's at a weak point in her life at that point at that time she's uh you know she's vulnerable at that time she is uh you know she's in need she's in need of your support she's in need of your care she needs you to be there for her. And if for her to bend down, you don't want to know her to lose that pregnancy because of because there was nobody there to wear the shoe for her. So make sure that you are there. Let her sit down. And when she sits down, put the shoe on her on her legs and um, you know, help her, you know, lace it. Let's, you know, that's one thing. Secondly, another thing that you have to try to do most of the time for your for her is to help her you know if you are here in a country like europe where we are with cold the cold weather and everything you know you need to help her carry a coat and then you need to help her wear that coat could wear that coat i've been talking about winter coat and things like that uh, apart from that you need to help her open that, the door to the to the car you need to help her holding, or, or, uh, open the door to the house open the door to the car you know, make sure she doesn't carry every things. I mean, every things. Make sure she does not carry every load, and uh, make sure you are always there with her. Now, that is uh, to some extent. Now, if you are working and you know that you are busy as a husband and you are working, there is no time for you to do all that. Then make sure that once your your wife, if you cannot do all these things personally, but make sure that once your uh, your wife gets pregnant you immediately employ uh maybe not the first three months but after four five months you want to immediately employ but you know there are some cases when women even from the very first month they begin to have a um, no so feeling that they begin to you know feel bad they cannot eat anything they cannot go to the kitchen and you know if that is the situation with your wife Make sure that immediately she gets pregnant, you get a maid for her, or you get an, a, a help for her, or you get a mother or a parent or somebody or your mother or your sister or somebody who is free enough to be there uh, with with her, 
to, to, to assist her to do all the things that she would normally do at home. So when your husband, wife is pregnant, you want to sp spoil her with care. You want to over care for her so much that she will be spoiled for good. You you you, you want to pre, you know tell her you want to pre, pre, prevent her from cooking. You want to prevent her from washing. You want to prevent her from doing any of the physical work. You want to just care for her. Just let her be cared for and taken care of. So that's why you must have some. You know you could if if you have money, employ somebody or bring somebody from the family to be there for her. So, you know, to help her do all the cooking, the laundry, the washing, and all those things. So that, that will re relieve her from a lot of things. And then you, that other person also will have to go for her to the, to the market and to the shop to do shopping also if you will not be there. Because if you are working, you might not be able to do all these things I'm saying. You might not be able to have the work from, uh, uh, the time away from your work. Maybe to be going with her to the hospital or to the shop or to all the things that you need to do. Then get somebody to do it for her. Don't just leave your wife with the pregnancy, you know, to be doing everything by herself, running up and down and still have to cook, still have to go to the kitchen, still have to do and do that, uh, everything. You know, make sure that you save her from that time. Even if you, if you are not such a nice husband, at least be nice to her during the time of pregnancy. At least at this particular time, make sure that you are kind to her that you are nice to her and that you are tender to her enough to, for her to feel that change and to feel that difference. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Well, let me see some of the things that you people are writing. Those are just some little things that uh, uh, you have to do before the pregnancy. <clears throat> Because talk, talking about raising godly children, it starts with that support that you have for your wife during pregnancy. And uh, <clears throat> maybe I will need to talk about how to help your wife during delivery. Do I need to talk about that? Uh, I think I need to ask you. Let me ask you the question. Maybe I should talk about how to support the woman during delivery during labor and during delivery before we begin to now talk about how to uh, how to uh, raise up the children well you let me know or i should just go ahead and talk about the raising of the children because if i just go ahead and talk about the children that is putting more emphasis on the fact that the child itself is more important than the mother who is giving birth to that child if I only talk about, you know, how to raise up children and I don't talk about what affects the raising up of that child and the raising up of that child, what affects it is, uh, is how you relate to the woman, how do you, you know, you attend to the woman, how you, you know, you raise the woman. Maria said, African men don't attend labor and delivery. <laughs> we have to change that. That has to change as fast as possible. So if you would need me to talk about that, maybe that's what I would do in the evening. Okay. <clears throat> Anyway, let me see some of the things you are writing here. Ushi Amadi said, talk about everything, sir. Justin said, do it. Harmonica said, Pastor, you are a genius. Most men don't do all these things you have said. God bless you again for this teaching. Nikki Christian said, Pastor, the very first day I got pregnant, my husband and I are pregnant together and throughout because on, the, on bed rest due to my history, and advice of my doctor. I was on bed, okay. <sighs> she, Sandra, says, every man should be encouraged to be in the labor room with their wives, right? Shalau, Allah, Padre, say, thank you, sir, and everyone. If you did or accept a child immediately on conception, can you still correct it during the pregnancy? If you didn't, okay. Can the rejection be cured? Yeah, I will talk about that later. We'll talk about that. Yeah, but it could it could be cured, yes.
Shioma said, please talk about how to support the woman during preg delivery. Okay, all of you want me to talk about that. Sunday away said a lot of sense in what Pastor has said, but on the issue of not marrying a poor man or buying a car, I don't fully agree. Yeah, you don't have to agree. Just to explain that to your wife. <laughs> I wonder who is the woman that will marry you. But uh, if she agrees to marry you and live like that, it's her choice. But I would not advise any woman to marry a poor man that is not that will not be able to buy a cow for her when she's pregnant or when at least for the family. Uh, you know, it's not a compulsory, it's not a law, but that's what I would do. I'm talking about myself and what I would recommend to people who who you know who want to listen. Shedun uh, Fatuma said, it was a great feeling for me as I was there throughout the pregnancy stages for my wife, for all our kids. Being present in the delivery room is what every man should experience. You will appreciate the woman more. Yeah. Uh, Jomani Doris, Pastor, what about women who fake sicknesses and get so lazy in pregnancy just to get attention, sir? That is very good for that. If, the, if, if a woman is faking sickness and laziness during pregnancy, that means she is in need of it. She will not fake it if she doesn't need it. If she is faking that uh, pregnancy and laziness and saying she needs attention, it means she never had enough attention when she was not pregnant. It means pregnancy now is her own opportunity to be cared for. Can you imagine for a woman to now have to fake that, you know, sickness so that she would get attention? It means that she never had that attention. It means she's dying for attention. It means she's, she's hungry for attention. It means, yes, she has to do it. If I were uh, I, I, I'm her pastor, uh, I would tell her to fake it, to do anything she needs to do to get all the attention she needs to get. She needs to get that attention because she will need it during the pregnancy and during childbirth because she would definitely need it. She would need all the attention she needs. So if she needs to fake it or not fake it, when she's pregnant, if either she's faking it or not faking it, you have to give it to her. She, Sandra, say, when my husband is not around to help me with my shoes, my older children help me out. It was an awesome experience. Yeah, thank God you had at least these children out there to help. Uh, Nkiru said, a pastor once said, the Holy Spirit said not to go to... to to the labor room with the wife. What a crap. <laughs> well, well, you know, people just use any kind of excuse. Paul says, if there is shame in you lacing your pregnancy, pregnant wife's shoes, that shows that you are a premature mistake for a man. Rubbish. Only a child in a man's clothing would make such excuse. Yeah. Especially when she's carrying your baby. Okay, Greg Gray is asking, Pastor, what about if the husband is not an, a lie around when the wife is pregnant? <laughs> well, that is one, that is, uh, one thing that um, every man... That's why pregnancy must not be by accident. Uh, it is my belief that pregnancy shouldn't be by accident. There are some pregnancy that could be by accident, but even when the pregnancy has happened, uh, a man should still make plans. That's why... Pregnancy and this, the process of pregnancy, the, the, pro, the time of pregnancy, the process of delivery, all those things shouldn't be accidental. All these things shouldn't be chaotic. 
You should ju not just live your life for chance. You should just not live your family for chance or for chaos or just have, make everything happen the way it happens. You know, so for, when you know that your wife is pregnant, make arrangements. If you happen to be outside or you are not in the country or you are not around, make sure that you have a help there ready for her and with her to help her most of the time. But personally, I don't believe in a wife being pregnant and the husband is not there. I don't believe in that at all. I believe that the time of pregnancy is the most trying time in the life of a woman. And I don't buy into the idea of the man living in another country while your wife is some in another country struggling with the pregnancy by herself. I don't buy into that at all. I believe that a man has to be there during the time of the pregnancy for the, for the wife. Now, he could travel once in a while or he could be away for a week or two, you know, maybe maximum a month, but most of the other times, he has to be around. <sighs> Pastor uh, Omonike said, most of the African men I know don't do all these things you are saying, even the Christians. Thanks for this teaching. Maybe a young generation will be able to do it. Uh, this could only happen if a man is caring, loving, and kind. That is Omonike saying that. Uh, Darlene Madu says, some women cause it for themselves just because they want to get pregnant. I have a friend, she was pregnant and she was alone, not with the father of our unborn baby, so I was helping her sometimes. One day, this lady fell, ooh, fell from a staircase. Jesus, Jesus. Pregnant woman fell from a staircase. Rochelle White says, this teaching is super powerful. Never thought so practically like this before. You see, that situation, that case of that old, or a pregnant woman falling down from the staircase is one of the reasons I was telling you that the man must be there with the, with the wife. And the man, the man must be there with the wife. Hold her, you know, by the hand. Give her support. Be there for her. Help her do all the things that, you know, she does not have to do by herself. <sighs> Agape Maji Yagbe said, Preach it, Pastor. It is not an easy task or feeling to be pregnant for one day, not to talk of standing in the bus stop waiting for bus as a pregnant woman. Uh, Paul David, very true, Pastor. Many males are so ignorant. They prepare to meet the child before he can begin uh, to bond with the child. Rejecting a pregnancy is rejecting a child. Whether or not the child knows it, that child was brewed in rejection, and there is a huge difference. On another note, many have aborted children based on male's rejection or lukewarm reaction. <laughs> for Lasha, they said, Pastor, your type is very few in this world. There are just about two, maybe there are just about two of you in the whole world. <laughs> uh, 
Well, we are from Malaya, say thank you, Pastor. You are so in depth. This revolution is for singles, brothers, and young couples. The caller K said rejection spirit is a major issue that needs to be dealt with by the parents through what the parents manifest. Parents' attitude and in the way they talk and relate to their children after the children come to life. Shoma and say, Pastor, please do share everything you know about this topic. Men don't really understand what pregnancy is all about. They see it as what, what every woman has to go through, and yours is not new. Hmm. Nelly Brown, I think the fall was an accident. The husband will still have to go to work when the wife is pregnant and can't always be there. Yeah, if that is what you want as a woman, good. But if I'm a woman, I would rather prefer the one that, even if he needs to go to work, but he will still have a help for me. Anastasia, Pastor, every time you teach, you reveal more and more of the Father's heart. And we are learning to be like him. Much respect to you, sir. Noel Okoshuku, when my wife is pregnant and I'm not around her, I'm always worried. I'm not a superman, neither am I a super rich guy, but my wife's need is my zeal. Very good, you see. He said he's not a superman, he's not rich, but, uh, you know, he puts his wife as priority because he loves the wife. Gift Amos, many African men are the way they are for lack of sound teaching. Churches, churches are not helping matters. I thank God. I thank God for Pastor Sunday's teaching. This, Lola Shorunke. Yes, my husband refused me to work and did a lot of the housework. Yeah, that's another thing. You know, when a wife is pregnant, for me, I think if my wife is pregnant, I don't want her to go to work, and I think that is what real men are supposed to do. Even if the government. We're not, they don't have maternity leave for the, for the women that are pregnant. But you, as the husband, you must be able to provide that kind of leave for your wife. You must be able to tell your wife from the very first month she's pregnant, from the very first month, maybe from the second, very latest, maybe from the third, she must stop working. I, for me, I think she has to stop working from the very first month. And, uh, you know, and you have, to, you have to work extra time if necessary. But not when she's already pregnant, but you are supposed to work before she got pregnant. Extra time to make sure you have enough savings for the, for the pregnant time. And, uh, you know, personally, I don't think that the wife should be working 50, to provide 50% of the needs of the family and the husband 50% or to be contributing so much to the... I think even before she got pregnant, uh, if she was working before, that even if she had to work, that that money she was making as uh, a working woman, she should put on her own account only, of apart for herself, so that when she becomes pregnant and she cannot work, she will have enough money to do whatever she needs to do apart from the money that you are giving to her. But personally, I think that my wife doesn't even need to work in the first place at all anyway. Uh, you know, either pregnant or she's not pregnant, but... When she becomes pregnant, definitely she's not working. Definitely she's not working. So that is very good, uh, Pastor Lola. Now, she said, my, wife, my husband refused me to work and did not allow me to do a lot of the housework. Very good. Later in my pregnancy, he sent for my mother to come help us from Maryland to California to help us. She stayed from 93 to 2005. They both spoiled me. Very good. That is how a real man should behave. That is what a real man should do. Pearl David, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Don't let your wearing a robe deny you the joy it is to assist your wife and seeing your child being born.
Nikki Christian say women pregnancies are different from one stage of high risk complication to the other. I will share my story one day. Obi Ojima does say pregnancy is a project. The man must make out time for the process. Brilliant. I like that. That is well said. Pregnancy must be treated as a project. That is well said. It's a project that must be planned for. Just like you want to do a business. If you want to do a business and you want that business to be profitable, you have to have business plan. You have to plan everything out. You have to plan what you want to do, what good you want to buy, and everything. So also is with the business. It's with pregnancy. If you apply, if you know, you must plan when you want to get pregnant, uh, what month or what year. What time? I know it doesn't always work out the way you plan, but at least have some plan in place. And, uh, you know, plan the budget for it, plan the, uh, the, um, the logistics, make, make sure you plan the support system uh, for your wife, make sure you plan the physical needs, the uh, material needs you will need, the finances you will need, the technical things you will need, you know, make sure that you actually approach marriage as a whole project, not just the pregnancy, the even a whole marriage, approach it as a project. You know, your marriage itself, you have to approach it as a project by studying, learning as much as you want to, even before pregnancy. Your husband and wife must sit down together and learn and study books on pregnancy, study books on how to expect a child what to do during when you are expecting a child, what to do be to, to, you know, before pregnancy, what to do during pregnancy, what to do, uh, what a husband should do, what a wife should do. You must prepare for everything. Everything has to be prepared for, even especially pregnancy. So before you even think of getting pregnant, make sure that you write, buy books on that topic. Make sure that you sit down together with your wife. Not just the wife reading books about, you know, about childbearing. A husband also must be familiar with those books. Husbands also must read those books. Husbands also must prepare themselves. So it's not just a, a woman's duty. It is the family project. It's you are, both of you are giving birth. Not just the woman's giving birth. Both the man and the woman, you are both giving birth together. So you are all, both of you are supposed to get pre prepared and do, you know, you know, you know, go through the you know, preparatory stage. Both of you are supposed to study books on that area and, and, you know, see and make sure that you help your wife to do all the preparatory things that she needs to do with her body, with her health and, you know, with the house. And you put everything together before even the pregnancy comes. So, yeah, pregnancy is a project and it must be treated as a project. Brilliant. Well said. So, Obi is saying that pregnancy is a project. The man must make out time for the process. He has to be there. Yeah, because he was there to make the woman pregnant. He was there to impregnate. If you, are, if you, are, you have to make time out for her to be pregnant, what kind of man are you? If you are making a woman to be pregnant, then not to be there when she will be carrying the burden of the pregnancy. He has to be there. He must be not. He, he might be absent for a short period, but must make arrangement for someone to help with the wife. Excellent. You see, Obi is having the same mindset like I'm having. Is thinking the same thing, and so you shouldn't say. Pastor Sunday is just the only man like this. If even if I'm the only one like this, we have to make every other person become like this. We have to make the whole world become like this. We have to make the whole world know, you know, what it means to be man. We don't just take what tradition has given unto us blindly. We don't just embrace what other men are doing or what the society around us are doing. We are supposed to bring the image of God into the picture. We are supposed to bring the picture of how God the Father assistance, how God would have acted, how Jesus would have acted in, a, in this situation. We are supposed to bring God's perspective into, into this. And God's perspective, God's nature is, you know, can you imagine Jesus, you know, when his friend, uh, Mary, his friends, Mary and uh, Martha, they were just friends with Jesus and, you know, they lost their brother. Jesus left everything he was doing. He traveled four days to get there. He, he went there to be with them. And the first thing he did when he got there and he saw that they were sad is to hug them and to cry with them. Jesus began to cry with them. Jesus was crying. 
Not that he couldn't raise up Lazarus. He knew he was going to raise him up. up. He knew she was going to rise from the dead. But, you know, he also knew the psychology of the woman. He knows that the woman does not just need the solution immediately. And it's not the solution that he's supposed to bring right, you know, right up like that. They need, first of all, emotional settlement. They need to be, you know, comforted, first of all. They, first of all, need to be... To be comforted, they needed to be, you know, to be given understanding and to for apathy to be exp uh, expressed to them. They needed to, you know, he needed to express sympathy to them. So you know, he needed to give them that emotional understanding, that sympathy, that you know, express that apathy towards them, and uh, and and that is what he did. So by crying, he's just showing them emotional. Solidarity is just showing that he's there with them. So if Jesus would be so mm, so sensitive uh, about women, I'm sure that Jesus would have treated uh, women better than even that I'm talking about right now. Uh, you know, just like when they wanted to stone the other woman that was caught in adultery, if he stood between the woman and the people, the the the, the people, the assaulters, the people who wanted to assault her. And, and protected her. So Jesus has a special consideration for the woman. And if you call a woman your wife and you don't have that kind of uh, understanding, that kind of consideration, it is troubling. It is deeply troubling. So, for example, this my brother that is saying, I agree with most of what Pastor Sunday is saying, but I don't agree with the fact that you know the, woman, the family has to have a car or the man has to be rich to be able to buy a car for... You know, for the family, and I'm I'm not I'm not going to be the one to live in your family. I have my own family. I'm okay. I'm telling you the best thing that is possible. I'm telling you how you could make your life better, how you could make the life of your wife better, how you could make the life of your children better. Yeah, I'm agreeing. I don't agree. Is it my life? Is your life? You know, you, I don't. I'm not. I'm I'm not interested. If you agree, if you don't agree, it's your choice. But uh, I'm just telling you what you should strive for. You know, try to be better. Don't just be where life has put you. Don't just, you know, agree with the non-entity that is around you, with what is happening around you. you. Put a goal before yourself. Target something better. Target a perfect goal. Put a goal, agenda. You know, put something in front of you. You know, God will help you if you have the goal, if you have the, the willingness, the passion, if you... If, if you are not saying, okay, I'm not going to accept this, I, uh, or I agree with this, or I don't agree with if that is better, if it's going to be good for your husband, I mean for your wife, if it's going to be good for your child, if it's going to be good for your baby, why don't you put it as a target? Why don't you strive towards it? Yes, maybe you are not ready for it right now. Maybe you are not there now. Yeah, but you could, you could put it as a target. Mashu Esan said, even though my husband cannot stand blood, but he was always there during pregnancy, during my delivery. This made a big difference. Beautiful. You see, even a man that couldn't stand blood, but he was still there during the pregnancy of the I mean, delivery of the wife. Look at that's what a man is supposed to do. A husband. That's what a husband is supposed to do. And uh, I too cannot stand blood. I can't stand blood. But... You know, if I have the opportunity to be there with, with, with my wife's pregnancy, I have to be there. Noel says, I wasn't compelled by any situation to treat my wife like a queen. You are compelled by a situation. You are compelled as you are a child of God to treat her like a queen. And you are also compelled to treat her like a queen because she is a child of God. You are compelled to treat her like a queen because she is the daughter of God. And besides that, the Bible compels you to treat her like a king because... 1 Peter 3, 7 says that treat her with understanding as the co-heir of, of, of eternal life. That is, as a princess. Treat her as a princess, as a co-heir of eternal life, this daughter of the king. So that is compelling right there. You know, so you are compelled to treat your wife as a king, as a queen, sorry, as a princess. That is scriptural to treat a woman as a princess. It is scriptural. It is not just Pastor Sunday's fantasy. This is scriptural. So uh, Noel is saying, I wasn't compelled by any situation to treat my wife like a queen, 
My wife has always been my zeal. So you are putting a medal on yourself by doing what you are supposed to do, no. You are pu putting a medal on yourself. You are praising your own self. You are making yourself look like a hero because you are doing elementary trains that you are supposed to do. The fact that other people are not doing that, that doesn't mean that, you know, the fact that you are doing it, you are beating yourself in the chair, so, you know, I'm doing it my wife. Now we have to listen to that, your wife. Maybe she's not even as rosy as it looks in your own eyes. Maybe you are not even doing enough yet. I don't disagree that you are doing your best, but, you know, find out ways that you could do better. Find out things that you could do better. If you are going to be busy praising yourself all the time, you are doing this, you have done this, you are doing that, you know, you, you will not find ways to, do, to improve what you are doing. So try to find new ways to even do much better for her. Gladys Umwosu said, pregnant is not a sickness. It's a natural thing to enjoy and be glad. No need to fake pregnancy, uh, to fake pregnant. I never had an easy pregnancy, but I was I always uh, uh, stand to the last day when I believe I'm a strong man. I'm a strong woman. Yeah, well, you know, you could have a better life if you have a husband that will be there for you. Kola Odetola said, I was there at the delivery of my children, and I thank God for this privilege. You see? So these are African men saying they were there, so which is okay. That's the way we're supposed to do. We're supposed to change that order that say men don't want to be there. They have to be there for their wives. Anastasia says, someone has designed a product which was experimented on fathers, basically an Imitation of pregnancy is strapped around the father. Anytime the baby kicks, it is transmitted to the father. And what joy the fa of the father's face. <laughs> Deborah's the call. That is affection and it is to be given passionately to the woman, especially at the stage of life, which bet is between life and death moment. Yeah, the presence of the, okay, what she's saying is the presence of the husband at the delivery is 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 actually affection and passion and love that should be expressed to the woman at the very critical stage of her life because uh, during pregnancy she is between death and life so it's always good to have a support there to have support of your husband there Kola said, by the grace of God and mercy of God, I was there at the delivery of all my four children. I called the cord myself by the grace of God. I delivered by my third child at home and the support of God and the midwife arrived 15 minutes later. Wow, everything was right. Thank you, Pastor. I feel your passion. Brilliant, brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Amy Bobby said in Thailand, I, was, I wanted to go into the labor room with my wife, but the doctors will not allow me. Yeah, that is a different case if the doctors will not allow you, but at least you are in the hospital there and you are supporting her. At least she knew that you wanted to be there. Uh, Pearl David says, Ladies, watch your words and vocabulary because treat, being treated well by, your, by our men is not saying you are being spoiled. You are being spoiled. It is because we are delicate. We are women because we are burdened by so many much other things uh, above, the, uh, above his responsibilities. It takes two to be pregnant, to deliver and to raise a child. Ojo Pelumi said, awesome message. <laughs> At least, even if there is no car in the family, there must be a taxi for the woman to ease her situation. Yes, at least. Uh, Unkiru said, my husband too was ready to go to the labor room with me, but he, he went to get something for a few minutes. Before he came back, I was <laughs> done. <laughs> uh -huh. 
<laughs> Shioma is saying women go into post postpartum depression because of the stress they go through during and after marriage. Yes, I will talk about that also when I'll be talking about pregnancy. Kola said it will be nice for men that did not give the necessary support during delivery to learn now and teach their children. Okay, then what I will do is that in the evening, I will probably talk about how to support your wife during pregnancy. No, no, during delivery. I think if you don't mind, if you are agree, if you are in agreement with that, I will probably come in the evening and talk about, before I, talk, before I begin to talk about how to raise up the children, let's talk about you know when the child is still in the pregnant in the pregnancy that that is also a child so i think we, and how the child comes to the world i think how the child comes to the world how he's accepted in the world is also important so i think maybe i should just do that tomorrow I mean, tonight i think i will do that in the evening how to support your wife during pregnancy i mean during delivery i will do that in the evening and then after delivery then we'll start taking from there what to do immediately after delivery, what to do immediately after coming back from the hospital. And, you know, so that whole process until the child becomes grown up. I think that's what we will do. T.Y. says, Pastor, there are millions of women married to men without cars. Not everyone can afford it. Oh, yes, I'm aware of that. But because there are millions of women who are married to men without cars, and there are millions of men who cannot afford a car, that does not mean we should make that our standard. That does not mean we should just reconcile with that and say that is what is good and that is what is normal. No, I believe that we should still put on the highest goal out there. We should still put out the highest uh, uh, aspiration out there for the men to aspire to something. Men have to have a goal. Men have to have an aspiration. Men have to have a target before themselves. Men have to strive and do their best. Uh, the fact that that is what is obtainable right now, I, especially in developing countries, I understand that. But I'm talking about in these Western countries, especially where car is no more a luxury. I think you know that is supposed to be a standard for 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 husbands. Let them put goals before themselves. Let them have a higher target. Let them strive to want something, even in developing countries. Let them have a target. Let them have a goal. So to just say, uh, okay, you know, because there are women who are married. So, so there are women who walk about without clothes also. Then why don't you take off your clothes and walk in the street and say, okay, there are women in Africa who don't wear clothes. I will not also not wear clothes in Europe. Is that the way you want to live? Or you say, oh, there are women who are, you know, there are millions of women who are, who are single, who give birth without without a husband. So is that what you want to do? So you also go and get, get it pregnant for anybody in the street or in the brothel and just be, you know, say because you want to carry a pregnancy. Is that the way you want to live your life? Because there are other women who are carrying pregnancy without a man. You know, of course, we all want to strive for the best. You should compare yourself to the best. You should strive for the best. You should look for the best. You should look for the best standard, the best example. Don't just settle for any mediocre, medio, med, uh, med, med, yeah, mediocre situation. She Sandra said, Pastor, you are just too real and your teachings are liberating. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Anastasia said, we sh cannot and should not repeat our parents' mistakes. So if our parents live like that, that doesn't mean that we have to live like that. Be them is a deep wisdom. You are full of wisdom. I honor you, sir. 
Esther Kuganja that says exactly standards have to be raised, yeah, not to be reduced. She said, she said, Pastor, perfect. We appreciate you so much. Anastasia says, this is so, there was such a sad situation, a true story posted on Facebook that happened in either Nigeria or Ghana. It was in Ghana. A, a woman pregnant with twin died outside the hospital because she didn't have the fees. You see, she didn't have the fees. As if it was not the human being who impregnated her. Somebody slept with that woman. Somebody is supposed to be responsible for those children. And someone will probably claim to be the father of those children later on. But they leave the woman alone to face, to face the music, to face the challenge of pregnancy. Now, she did not just face that challenge alone for nine months carrying the pregnancy by herself. No care, no love, no protection, no security, nothing. Now she had to go and find the hospital by herself without the car. Had to get there somehow with twins in her stomach. Then she got there. She cannot even enter because she, she couldn't pay for it. Because no husband to be there with her. No husband to walk it out. No husband to pay for the hospital bill. She was all there alone. So she was left outside until she bled to death. And there is a man that did that. And you want to leave the man out of the picture? She, Sandra, said, my husband was there throughout all the, 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 birth, the birth of my four children, and the bounding was awesome. Jagadet Temitokwe said, is it possible for the man to be unavoidably absent? physically for a period but involved adequately in the process support is physical emotional and spiritual yes i already said that in the beginning that i don't believe in the husband not being there during the pregnancy of the wife uh, if he needed to be absent unavoidably then he has to put all the support on ground he has to make sure that he didn't plan to be absent because uh, if he needed to be absent, then he shouldn't plan the pregnancy for that period. But if he's not aware of he was not going to be aware that the pregnancy was coming and he had to travel, then that is different. But if he if he's aware, he shouldn't plan for himself to be absent while the wife alone is carrying the pregnancy. So uh, it is better for her to for him to plan to be around. And but if it so happened that he cannot be around, he had to go then he has to definitely plan for all the necessary help to be there for her. A car, maybe with a driver, a help, or a maid, or maybe with a relative to be there to support or something like that. Nikki is asking, uh, Nikki Christian, a fatherly advice, if a man tells you to, ad to abort a pregnancy, because of financial reasons, tell him no, that he can kill the baby after it is born. 
you are not ready to have a graveyard in your tummy. Brilliant. When I read this on the internet, I wept. Wow. Tayo Stevens said, these are hard, hard truth for men, sir. Keep it, keep it up. We rarely hear this from men. Thank you for becoming men's mentor. Well, uh, you know, I think someone has to speak about these things. Ladi Shorunka said, when we had our first baby, I was still doing my residency training, and I still have to add to find time to attend to all the needs of my pregnant wife, especially the cravings for special food late at night. <laughs> Vivian Taylor says, I was very blessed during my pregnancies. My husband was the best and was in the delivery room as well. My daughter, on the other hand, married an African man who punched her in the stomach while she was carrying his child. We didn't find out till much later when wow she's saying women need to speak out during ab abuse especially when they are pregnant oh my god Obi Ojimadu said, our first child was very active in, this, in the womb. She would turn and kick for a long time. She always calmed down when I touched my wife's stomach and came close to sing or talk to the child. Wow. I was there for, from the onset and she knew my voice. Wow. After her birth, my kids slept faster when I sang lullaby. Wow. For them. It got to the point where they preferred only me putting them to sleep. Brilliant, wonderful. This created a strong bond between me and my kids till date. Brilliant. You see, that's a man talking right there. That's a real man right there. Ushe Amade is a single man here and he's saying, wow, I didn't know that women go through so much. You see, these things need to be spoken about. Even men, single men don't even know. They are not aware that, uh, that women go through these kind of things. Davida says, men, women, are you mothers, sisters, daughters, and aunties? When you treat your wife right, you are treating every other woman in your life right we have been told to love one another as we love ourselves right Lara Shomoye said, in fact, some men just want to be caught and told they have an hair, all grown and already made, no work done, either at birth or while growing up. Well, that is exactly the reason I don't believe that uh, I personally needed to go and look for the family of my father. You know, I've never met my father and I don't know him. I, some people ask me sometimes, do you want to go and look for him? No, I don't want to. Why should I go and look for him now when I'm successful? <laughs> for him to go and live where he didn't so? I've forgiven him. I love him. I, 
you know, I thank God for him that at least God used him to bring me to this world. But why should I leave and abandon the family that brought me up, my mother's family, and, you know, go and, you know, be looking for somebody that never looked for me? I love them, you know. If they, if, <laughs> I'm sure they don't even recognize that it is me, that it is their son that, that did this work that is here. You know, they are not looking for me. Why should I be going to bother myself to look for anybody? You know, uh, I should rather be showing love and gratitude to the family that received me. Shigun Wafo said, I still wonder how we have missed it so much as a church. Even the so-called spiritual heirs don't practice these things, not to talk of teaching it. No conversion of the word whatsoever. God bless you so much, Pastor, for getting into the nitty-gritty of the human life. This is simple spiritual common sense that is not common at all. A cool show. Thank you. <laughs> so he speaks of Yoruba, right? Doris Ngere, men should take pastor's advice in good faith. But women, because men are there to look after us, doesn't mean we should make them do things that is not acceptable by God just to make us happy. Some men are in prison today because they were trying to impress a woman. Tayo says, Pastor, you need to ask the thing your return to Africa. Our value system is twisted. We need to start from there. Yep. I'm coming. John Lucky said, I was with my wife in the labor room. It was like I was the one doing all the pushing. <laughs> May God bless women, really. Gift Amos said, I know of a girl here in Spain. Her husband brought her from Mali because they are Malians. This girl, 23 years old, was so naive. She, don't, she doesn't even know she got pregnant. And she continued with a normal uh, shorts. She pounded yam with a naive style. And every other, she got stressed up until she got hospitalized and ended up of losing the pregnancy and a womb after three years and the band went and got married to another village girl wow hmm Kiro says, Pastor Sunday once told of a story of a girl, of a guy in the church who proposed to a girl in the church, and she was told he was told to prove his intention. This man went back and built a big house and put every other thing there. If men hold you enough, they can do it. Yep. She, Sandra, said, Pastor, you are just too real. Your teachings are liberating. God bless you now and always. Thank you. Whew. You know, guys, Monica said, Pastor Sunday, most men, African men that I know, don't help their wives during pregnancy. They are never there uh, to do anything. I hope men will listen to your advice. God bless you, Pastor Sunday, for your teaching.
gift ever. Stress during pregnancy has caused so many women damages. Some have gotten their wombs removed. Uh, some have gone insane. And some have lost both their fallopian tube. Women have a lot of tragedy. Wow. Well, because of pregnancy. T.Y. says, my, God says my people perish for lack of knowledge. That is why we are perishing. Knowledge is the key. You see unbelievable unbelievers doing exploits and we are just praying. Well, let me see the time. Wow, my God. <laughs> I didn't even notice that the time is gone. And I'm not even... <laughs> wow, anyway. I think we'll just uh, continue tonight. I think I will have to talk about. Uh, I will have to talk about how to take care of your, how to help your wife during delivery in the in the evening. I think I've got to talk about that. You know, if you if you, if, I think you, the truth just have to be told. Uh, if you do not like, if you don't appreciate that, if you think that is off, a man shouldn't help the wife during pregnancy or during delivery. You don't have to. You don't have to respond. You don't have to be there. You don't have to come to hear me in the evening. But you know. But maybe it could be a blessing to somebody. So please, let's go and share the link. Let's go and share this link. Let's go and share the message. Uh, the message could be a blessing to somebody. Maybe somebody will be helped. Maybe somebody will be assisted with this message. So let's go share the message, please. God bless you guys. See you in the evening. Bye.